My name is Kim, and I'm living on a pension due to my age. I have a daughter named Angela who works as a tax accountant. She spent her 20s focusing on her studies and work, which meant she remained single during that time. However, after turning 30, she found someone and got married. I believed a new life was waiting for her, but I never expected something shocking like this to happen. Angela has been good at math since she was a child, which made studying enjoyable for her. This led her to pursue a career as a tax accountant. My husband and I always encouraged her to follow her passion, telling her that she had talent and that we would support her. After graduating, she worked at a tax accountant's office for about 10 years before starting her own firm. Our family and Angela's friends were thrilled and celebrated this achievement, which is a happy memory for me. However, by the time Angela set up her own office, she was already 35 and still single. She had put romance on hold to focus on her career, but did have a desire to get married. As Angela became more settled in her office, she started engaging in matchmaking activities. During one matchmaking event, she met Chris, a salesman who worked for a small to medium-sized company. He was two years younger than Angela, but impressed her from the start with his polite manners and attentiveness. Angela was moved to find such a wonderful man existed. Chris even noticed when her drink was empty during the party and called a waiter for her. He also shared his umbrella with her in the rain. After they arrived at the station, Angela noticed that Chris was quite wet from the rain. Despite being rained on himself, Chris made sure to keep the umbrella over Angela, showing his gentlemanly qualities. Angela herself thought he was the one, and after several dates and a confession, he accepted, and they started dating. Chris has always been considerate and kind to Angela, making her realize that love could be wonderful. About a year later, Chris proposed to Angela, and naturally, she accepted, becoming someone's fiancé. Hearing this, I was moved to tears. Actually, I lost my husband three years ago, and until his death, he always said, I just want to see Angela in her moment of glory. Unfortunately, he passed away from an illness before his dream could come true, but I've reported to him in heaven. I'm sure my husband is also pleased with Angela's engagement. Later, Angela and Chris started living together in Angela's apartment, feeling happy every day. But this happiness was not to last. One day, Angela called me, Mom, Chris wants to formally greet you. Can we come over soon? This call from Angela was such joyful news. Angela and Chris were planning their marriage registration and wedding date. Chris' respectful wish was to formally greet us before these events. I thought he was a wonderful man, but my impression changed a bit when he came to greet us. I had never spoken face-to-face -face with Chris before. My conversations with him were limited to occasional phone calls during dates with Angela. The prospect of meeting him in person made me nervous. On the scheduled day, Chris and Angela visited my home. Um, my name is Chris, and I'm engaged to Angela. I wanted to greet you before we get married. His first words to me felt a bit off. Angela had described him as more assertive, and even from our brief phone conversations, I had imagined him to be more lively. But at that moment, he seemed hesitant and lacked vigor. Thank you for coming all this way, I replied, but Chris responded. Well, it's just manners. I couldn't help but sense his unease. However, when Chris mentioned, I heard about your husband's passing and wished I could have met him. I thought maybe he was indeed a sincere and good person. Angelo reassured him, You seem tense. Just relax. It's all good. We had dinner together, and then they left. Yet, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was different. Angela started to feel it too as time went on. After they officially registered their marriage, Angela called me one day. Mom, Chris has been saying some concerning things lately. Hearing that, I considered my own feelings and decided to listen to Angela's story. Then she said, You know, when Chris went to greet you on his way back, he said something like, I was surprised. I thought she lived in a bigger house. What do you think, Mom? It seems Angela gave him a proper response to his question at that time. After Dad passed away, it was just Mom by herself. So she moved into a smaller, slightly older apartment. 
Chris seemed to understand at the time, but later made a remark that troubled Angela. Mom's gaze doesn't seem to settle. Does she even know who she's talking to? Angela had to explain that the shock of my husband's death had deteriorated my vision until I became blind. Chris reacted, Ha! Huh, blind? And you're sending her $1,500 every month seriously. That means the pension isn't enough, huh? I see his response slightly tinged with a bitter smile puzzled Angela. She was surprised that Chris brought up the financial support she had mentioned in the past. At that moment, she couldn't speak the truth. Furthermore, as they were planning the wedding, Chris asked, Can your mom attend the wedding? Is money going to be an issue? This made me wonder how he perceived me. I reassured Angela, What's there to worry about? Tell him everything's fine. Despite my growing concerns, the wedding expenses had already been paid, and it was too late to call it off. Let's just enjoy it. I concluded our call positively. Of course, I would attend and celebrate my daughter's big day. I couldn't dampen her spirits by expressing any negativity about the wedding. However, on the day of the wedding, I encountered an unexpected situation. Assisted by someone acting as my eyes, I was shocked to find that Angela had about 20 colleagues and friends from her office. But Chris had no co-workers present, only three friends and his parents. The imbalance was striking. Maybe his co-workers were busy, and considering Chris's age, it's possible that many of his friends were already married, making it difficult to gather a large group. So I tried to stay positive as the ceremony began. At the wedding, I was somewhat reassured seeing Chris's lively demeanor during the reception. When it was time for the bride and groom to change outfits, I decided to greet Chris's parents and friends. Chris's parents were very polite, leaving a good impression. However, the conversation with his friends was unsettling. They said things like, Should we congratulate you? What should we say? We do hope your daughter finds happiness. It's unbelievable Chris is getting married. He must have used his sales skills, right? Their manner of speaking as if hiding something left me feeling uneasy. My feelings about the groom fluctuated greatly, but eventually doubts about the marriage's validity grew stronger. The words of these friends were not something you'd say to the bride's mother. Regretfully, I even considered that Angela might be better off divorcing should the need arise. Of course, I didn't want to imagine such a reality. Yet, when the newlyweds re-entered after changing outfits, my fears seemed to become reality. Angela appeared in her finest, which was described to me by my companion. She's wearing a long pink dress and looks very beautiful. Hearing that, I imagined it in my mind and wished I could have seen it with my own eyes. But the reality was complex. I couldn't shake the feeling that marrying Chris might not be the best decision for Angela. During the reception, Chris began his speech, which quickly took a turn for the worse. Thank you all for gathering here today. He started properly, but then claimed, My dream is to live a life of leisure and play, and marrying Angela has made that possible. The audience murmured at his bold statement. Whether he noticed or not, Chris continued, But to achieve my dream, there's something I must do. The atmosphere shifted dramatically, leaving everyone anxious about what he would say next. Chris then shockingly declared, Angela earns a lot and even sends $1,500 monthly to her mother-in-law, but that money would be better spent on our living expenses. It seems her mother-in-law is blind and receives little pension. Angela's support interferes with my dreams. A blind old woman is nothing but a nuisance, Chris said. We will stop the financial support. The audience was stunned into silence by Chris's unexpected words. Angela panicked. What are you saying? This isn't the place for that, and you can't just decide to stop the support. But Chris insisted. What are you even talking about? Our life together is more important than your mother. Indeed, the discomfort I initially felt was not misplaced. Ultimately, it seems Chris approached Angela with her money in mind for marriage. But when he came to my house, he probably assumed based on its old appearance that the pension must be low. He thought Angela's earnings were being siphoned off by me, treating me as a nuisance. But did he really think it would work out for him? He doesn't realize that he's the one who will end up seeing hell. 
After his selfish remarks worsened the atmosphere, with Angela feeling more indignant than I did, she must have thought the celebratory mood didn't matter anymore. Indeed, Angela's friends looked at Chris with disdain. Then Angela forcefully took the mick from Chris and calmly asked him, You seem to be misunderstanding something. Do you not know who my mother is? Chris retorted. What? What are you suddenly talking about, Angela? Isn't she just the kind of person I mentioned earlier? A nuisance old hag who sucks up our living expenses. Hearing this, Angela sighed, seemingly exasperated, and began to enlighten him reluctantly. You see, my parents are the owners of a metalworking company. It's a small company, but the name is quite well known now. They have even started selling metal art pieces that are popular not just in the U.S., but internationally as well. When Angela mentioned the company's name, Chris's voice gradually became quieter. Angela continued to explain, That's why you see, my parents make quite a bit of money, probably more than three times what I make. Now that means they've contributed a lot to their pension. Now that they've handed the company over to their employees, they're receiving a substantial pension. They have plenty of savings. My father's inheritance has come in, and they can live comfortably without my financial support. They even employ two housekeepers because of the blindness. Chris's face paled as Angela spoke. But if that's the case, he stuttered. You don't have to live in such an old house, do you? Angela firmly responded. Living in a big, beautiful house would mean a lot of cleaning, right? Besides, living alone means I don't need that much space. Chris seemed unable to say anything, just shivering. Finally, Angela made it clear. Also, just so you know, the $1,500 I send is just me paying them back for my college fees and the room we're living in now. That place was bought by my parents. My mother says I don't need to pay it back. But I insisted, so she accepted it. That means the house is technically in my name, so you'll need to leave, I told Chris. Chris was shocked. What? Why do I have to leave? We're married, aren't we? He must have seen what was coming, but Angela was clear. We're getting a divorce. We just registered. But let's call this a divorce ceremony. She then came over to me, having made her stance clear. I stood up and addressed everyone at the venue. I apologize for the turn of events despite your gathering here. But as a mother, I'm glad this divorce ceremony took place. My husband in heaven and I are very pleased with that. Everyone in the venue began to applaud me, and Angela, even Chris's friends, joined in the applause, possibly recognizing the stature of our company upon hearing its name. I then bowed to Chris's parents again. My companion told me they seemed genuinely sorry. As we left the venue, Angela and I felt strangely liberated despite the outcome. Later, Angela returned the wedding gifts and paid her share of the wedding expenses as agreed. The divorce was finalized easily with the help of a lawyer, and Angela returned to being single. She apologized to me for falling for such a man and causing trouble. But I told her this might have been a good experience for her, considering her past indifference to romance, potentially a valuable lesson for her future happiness. Upon hearing that, Angela said, it really is different with a charismatic company leader. I want to be like you, Mom, and we both laughed. That reminded me when Chris's friend said, typical of Chris, the salesman, it meant he had the talk and actions to deceive Angela, which in a way might be admirable. But being blind allowed me to sense feelings through the tone and pitch of a voice. So, was it that I immediately felt something off about the way Chris spoke to me? Perhaps that was more skillful after all. Meanwhile, Chris really seemed to be relying on Angela's earnings, bragging about his wife at work excessively. But what he boasted was, My wife isn't really cute or fun, but she's seriously loaded. With this, I can quit my job whenever I want. How jealous are you? It appears he was truly a man lacking morals as he garnered disdain from his co-workers, becoming ignored by everyone. No wonder nobody attended the wedding, and after the divorce, his entitled attitude got him fired by the company's president. Now without income, Chris was responsible for half of the wedding expenses, but had no money and no one willing to help. The three friends who attended the wedding said, 
Well, we attended because he came to ours. But otherwise, we wouldn't want to attend such a guy's wedding. We aren't that close, and he only gave a $30 gift at our weddings. What kind of nerve is that? They weren't really friends. It seems even Chris's parents, having had enough of his actions at the wedding, refused to lend him money or let him return home. Forced to take a loan to pay his share of the wedding expenses, he's now living a miserable life in a rundown apartment, barely making ends meet with day labor.